terminates the accusation row between the Kenya Airports Authority and the National Korea KQ, the flag carrier Ellen posted positive financial results in revenue for the year ending in December 2018. The Kenya Airports, the, sorry, the Kenya Airways recorded growth in revenue amounting to 114.45 billion shillings in 2018 compared to 80.7 nine billion shillings registered for the months to December of 2017. The growth was boosted by growth in passengers and cargo revenues. Passengers revenue grew from 63.9 billion shillings in the ninth months of 2017 to 88.7 billion shillings in 2018, while cargo revenue grew to 8.68 billion shillings from 5.7 billion shillings for the periods under review. Passengers' number were 4.84 million at close of December 2018, while the nine-month period ended December 2017 recorded at 3.43 million passengers. Despite the growth in revenue, KQ registered considerable losses in its loss before income tax, which increased from 6 3 billion shillings in 2017 to 7.6 billion shillings in 2018. The flag carrier airline now has committed to various measures to ensure financial and operating efficiencies for a sustainable business. Some of the commitments include expanding network through introduction of new routes, revenue enhancement through boosting of ancillary revenue streams, and continue focus on cost reducing initiatives. Yes, remember the discussion we are having tonight is despite agriculture contributing to 26% of the Kenya's GDP, why are so many youths not taking up this opportunity? Instead, they want white collar jobs. Moving on to another story, making headlines today is Equity Bank and Safaricom have revived the MK Show partnership that was launched nine years ago in a move to expand their digital financial businesses. Under the agreement, customer will be able to access financial services through their Safaricom mobile lines. The pact will see them build more inclusive financial products, explore regional synergies, simplify cash delivery between their agents, and share technical knowledge to build a common approach to risks such as fraud and cybercrime. Safaricom and Equity Bank are keen on leveraging on technology and innovation to penetrate the financial market, including revamping and restructuring of the m services that will see the lenders, customers access financial services via Safaricom mobile lines. Equity Group CEO James Mwangi says the partnership will be strategic for the two companies to actively participate and invest in the Big Four agenda. Further talks on the agreement are still ongoing with the sign up with the signed awaiting approval from relevant authorities. Yes, you remember you can be part of this conversation using our social media platform. That is Y254 channel across all social media platform. Or you can tweet me directly at Miriam underscore Masava. Remember the hashtag to use is Y254 updates. And moving on to the stories making headlines today is the government has launched a braille version of the Vision 20. 30, 2030 blueprint in efforts to increase reach to people living with disabilities. Head of Public Service Joseph Kinyo says members of the public would, would, would sensi will be sensitized on the need to openly embrace diversity and inclusion by mainstreaming and supporting people with disabilities. The Vision 2030 has economic, social, political, pillars that are anchored on, among others, macroeconomic stability, continuity on governance reforms, infrastructure, energy, land reform, and human resource development. However, it has been a challenge for people living with disabilities, especially those with visual impairment, to understand the document. It is based on this that the government has unveiled a braille version of the Vision 2030 blueprint. Official says the government will step up sensitization of members of the public on the need to openly embrace diversity and inclusion by mainstreaming and supporting people with disabilities. And moving on, drilling for water for the multi-billion shillings special economic zone in Mayu Mayu, Nakuru County has kicked off with projections that will supply 8,000 cubic meters of water per day. 
Water and Sanitation Principal Secretary Joseph Irungu says, under the initiative, five boreholes would be drilled near Delamere Farm and equipped. Speaking after he visited the site, Irungu said that the boreholes had fluoride free water that was ample for special economic zone. He termed the 1,000 acre industrial park as a reality, adding that a lot of water was needed as works by various investors kick off in the next couple of months. And welcome back. Remember, you can be part of this conversation using our social media handles, which is Y254 channel across all social media platforms. Remember, today is Business Tuesday, and we're talking matters business, where we bring you business news locally, internationally, and even globally. And moving on to our international business news, telecommunication group Vodafone found security flows in equipped, supplied by China's Huawei to its Italian business in sorry, in, in 2011 and 2012. The two companies said on Tuesday, Vodafone Europe's biggest telecom group, group said it had found security vulnerabilities in two products that both incidents had been resolved quickly. Huawei, the world's biggest producer of telecoms equipment, is under intense scrutiny after United States told allies not to use its technology because of fear it could be a vehicle for Chinese spying. Several European telecoms operators are considering removing Huawei equipment from their networks. In January, Vodafone paused the deployment of Huawei equipment in its core networks in Europe until Western governments resolve their security concern about the company. However, Huawei has categorically denied this. Huawei said it was made aware of historical vulnerabilities in 2011 and 2012 and that they had been addressed at the time. Now those are the news making headlines tonight or today rather and moving on to our discussion of the day we're discussing about youths in the agriculture sector. Most of the youths are shying away taking up agriculture as form of employment despite agriculture contributing at least 26% of the country's GDP. And tonight in studio we have Eric Machugu who is an agribusiness student and will be taking part of this conversation. Remember also you can be part of this using our social media platform that is Y254 channel across all social media social media platform where you can tweet me directly at Miriam underscore must have the hashtag to use is Y254 updates. Eric Karibu Sana to Y254 studio. Thank you. Yes how are you today? Uh, I'm very fine. Uh, yes. And I'm glad to be part of this show. <laughs> Yes, yeah. welcome so much. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the uh, agriculture sector, you said we've seen that the statistics show that agriculture contributes 26, at least 26 mm -hmm. percent of the, uh, the of the economy, mm -hmm. GDPs mm -hmm. of the Kenya's GDP. Okay, and what what are, what do we expect this year, considering the long droughts and the unexpected rain and uh, unfavorable rain? rains sorry rather rains and uh, farm inputs which are really expensive what, what are the expectations this year in terms of food production compared to last year because last year was it had really improved this okay. year what do we expect do we expect another season of us starving or lack of food you know because um, food security is among the government big four agenda uh. <coughs> This year, we, we expect a drop in the food production, mm -hmm. owing to the fact that the drought that has hit the country recently, mm -hmm. uh, this being the month that we receive the long lanes, which are vital for food production in the country. Uh, so therefore, we don't expect that the country produce enough food uh, for the citizens. We expect a drop. Because, you know, with the farmers in the western region, in Tanzania, Mm -hmm. They usually say maize and wheat farming require a lot of rain mm -hmm. and require a lot of farm input. So chances are that the food production this year will be minimal mm -hmm. compared to last year. Yeah. yeah. What's your take on that? 
uh, that presents an opportunity mm -hmm. for agriculturalists, I mean farmers in the villages and those uh, practicing small scale farming on their farms, uh, they can irrigate their land for food production uh, to meet the, uh, the deficiency of food that will result from the uh, lack, of, lack of lanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also presents an opportunity for the government to release the, uh, the grains that they buy annually from the farmers and they store the NCPB. You can release the grains at favorable prices for the for consumers. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. For the farmers. Mm -hmm. Yes, we continue this discussion here on Y254. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a very short break. We'll be back after this. Y254. Imagine. Watu, mnajua ni aje? Wana usema usema, mbini ufuata mwendo na basi runinga ya Y254. Tunafuata mkondo huo kwa kisha tunalea vipaji na kupupa burudani, kupitia vipindi, vya mziki, majadiliano na ilimu. Pia tunangazia maswala burudani na kukupa exclusive kutoka kwa mastaa uwapendao. Heyo mambo vipi, this is Alicia Selichi. Kuna 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 Tupo katika vinga muzi vyote vya digital. Boomsha. Fresh. Fresh. Darkness bring out our emotions. Mix them up and not like potions. Countless times we catch the sunrise. Some scars we share with white lights. My for you. I got the keys to heaven now. Bays all around and the gum of my spinning. I got the keys to heaven now. Yes, and welcome back. And tonight we are discussing matters agriculture and why youths are not taking up farming as part of employment, in despite farming contributing 26% of the country's GDP. So remember, you can be part of this conversation using a social media platform that is Y254 channel across all social media platform, or you can use hashtag Y254 updates. And tonight in studio, we have Eric Quiz and agriculture. Agribusiness student, right? Agribusiness yeah, yeah. or agribusiness. Agri yeah, you know, uh -huh. I got it right. Okay, moving on. Hmm? What, uh, cause, because farmers in the Western region usually complain about post-harvest losses. Mm -hmm. they are, there is no way they can store their, their pro production, yeah, food production. They end up losing almost even 40% of mm -hmm. what they have harvested. harvested. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think, what can be done, what the government can do, what what can we do to improve or to reduce these post-harvest losses? Uh, <coughs> firstly, I would like uh, to acknowledge that a post-harvest loss is one of the contributors to the losses that the farmers are incurring. Mm. And I think that there are all opportunities that the government uh, can implement to counter this uh, a problem that mm. the farmers are facing. Mm -hmm. Firstly, po post-harvest losses result from uh, the hardening mechanism, how the farmers handle the produce, mm. uh, can result to post-harvest uh, losses. Mm. So, uh, look at the transport systems that are in place. Most of the, of the produce goes bad where it's on transit from the farm mm. to the market. Mm. You can imagine uh, produce like vegetables, which are highly perishable. They are probably going to get uh, 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 damaged before they reach the market. Secondly, the government can provide uh, uh, 
refrigeration, refrigerated trucks that transport uh, high perishable products. Mm -hmm. The government can uh, build uh, storage facilities for the farmers so that product, products or the grains can be stored in uh, conditions that will remit uh, instances that would result into uh, damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the opportunities are too many that can be implemented. There's so many implementation. Yeah, so many. Because last year we had cases of a national cereal board not having room to store mm -hmm. the food production, like maize. Mm -hmm. There was in plenty, so they had no place mm -hmm. to store. What can be done to improve on that issue? I think to avoid such yeah. cases where we don't have anywhere we can store our production, our maize production, and even wheat production, even rice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, we need to expand. Uh, our storage capacity mm -hmm. and uh, we need to stop uh, import export I mean uh, importing food produce before we buy from the local producers until until it's exhausted mm -hmm. yeah. Ap apart from storage what other challenges th does agriculture sector is facing right now in Kenya what uh, are the other challenges uh, there the, the are several mm -hmm. of those challenges mm -hmm. and firstly I would like to begin with the, one of the major challenges, mm -hmm. and that is the middlemen and you know they, they create the link between the producer and the and the, and the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now the middlemen uh, really take a very huge chunk of a farmer's of the farmer's income, so they buy uh, at very low prices, and they sell to the consumers at comparatively high prices, mm -hmm. which are uh, leaps of the farmers part of their mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another challenge uh, would be access to credit. Access to credit, the farmers are actually complaining. They don't have uh, enough credit mm -hmm. uh, to finance their production activities. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other several uh, challenges, and the government needs to step, to step in and try and provide uh, solutions to these challenges. And we've had cases of circles denying loans to these small scale farmers, or even farmers in general. Mm -hmm. What could be the reason? Why are these circles denying? these farmers loans or funds uh, mm -hmm. uh, first three uh, the, the the circles uh, are not sure whether they can bank on the farmers to pay the loans on time mm -hmm. taking into account that uh, the losses the farmers experience are too way too high uh, the, the security the farmers uh, the circle cannot be so much uh, sure that the farmer will pay mm -hmm. together with the interest mm -hmm. yeah and now moving on to youths Mm -hmm. No, the other day, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fishery issued a report that only 3% mm -hmm. of Kenyan students mm -hmm. choose to go and pursue courses like agriculture, forestry and fisheries. Mm -hmm. why, are they, why are youths shying away from such courses? Is it not attractive enough like IT or econ or statistics mm -hmm. uh, or business or these other business related courses? Uh, the course, I, I first would like to accept mm. uh, that, the, that the course may not be as attractive as <laughs> other courses are. <laughs> Guys no, want to do only IT. <laughs> they, wanna, they want to do IT, <laughs> uh, they want to do engineering, mm. they want to do medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's based on the, the, the information that exists. Mm -hmm. uh, students are uh, being informed that these are the big courses, this way you can get a lot of money, this way you get a job instantly. Yes of which uh, it's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably an reason that exists among the students. Uh, agriculture provides uh, very many opportunities mm -hmm. for students mm -hmm. who want to venture into f uh, commercial farming, commercial production of food. Uh, you can become a lecturer. Yeah. When you study agriculture, you can, can lecture in the agricultural department uh -huh. in Kenyan universities. You can pursue master's degree. You can uh, get in the government. There are a lot of opportunities. So students need to stop uh, believing on or uh, accepting the existing uh, ideology mm. that when you get into agriculture, you are definitely going to be a farmer in gumboots and <laughs> soil guards. Uh, that's not the, the case. They only need white collar jobs. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what should be done? What should the government do to encourage more youths to take up such courses and to take up farming as mm -hmm. a form of employment? Because you know agriculture mm -hmm. plays two major roles. There are other roles, yeah, mm -hmm. but two major roles like employment. Mm -hmm. It creates employment. Yeah. For instance, if I have a, a, a farm somewhere and I'm planting maize, mm -hmm. 
to create employment because I need people to plow my land, to plant those maize. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it creates employment also, it enhances mm -hmm. food security in the country. I don't what do you think the government should do to encourage more farmers to take up agriculture and farming as part of employment? Uh, there are many things the government can do mm -hmm. to encourage uh, farmers to take up mm -hmm. agricultural activities. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, it, will, it will start by solving the challenges that uh, limit or uh, discourage potential farmers from going into agriculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, like lack of credit facilities mm -hmm. is one of the challenge that mm -hmm. discourages people from going to agriculture. When you hear uh, your neighbor there uh, complaining that he or she does not have enough money to buy farm inputs, mm -hmm. uh, to pay workers, to buy farm machinery, so uh, you are kind uh, of gonna be um, be discouraged from mm -hmm. undertaking that uh, enterprise activity. Mm -hmm. uh, second, the government would uh, create awareness that this uh, agriculture is quite a potential business for successful investors and mm -hmm. business people mm -hmm. through information, through uh, platforms like uh, ICT, social media, mm -hmm. uh, the media news on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mainly it's getting information to potential farmers and also introducing agricultural courses in school. But you have agriculture courses. They are not as much. Uh, in primary, yes. In primary, we do not have. Mm -hmm. But in sec secondary, mm -hmm. the secondary level, we do have education. Mm -hmm. So sh should this agriculture uh, course or a subject, should it begin from as early as primary, just to create awareness that actually agriculture is a form of employment? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, should, it should actually start at as primary school. As early as primary mm. school. What are these other also other innovations that the private sector you know, can bring in as well as the government can bring in to attract more youths? You know, youths nowadays are tech savvy. Mm -hmm. What are these these uh, innovation in terms of ICT and other things that can encourage more youths mm -hmm. to take up agriculture and farming? Uh, probably, let's say the cre introducing Krimo Biashara platforms mm -hmm. online whereby uh, farmers or those practicing agribusiness can, pot can portray the success that they have achieved. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, you find a farmer saying that, I, I, I raised chicken for six months and this is a profit that I gained. You see, you inform another potential farmer mm -hmm. to uh, engage in a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in terms of policies, laws, are they favorable to our youths? Because not every youth can access mm -hmm. land, can mm -hmm. access this input. Mm -hmm. These barriers to entry, mm -hmm. yes. Do you think these terms and policy, do they favor Mavijana wetu? Uh, easy terms, uh, easy policies in Bayasana. <laughs> the policies are not favorable for agriculture. Mm -hmm. And I think the government needs to change the way they implement or they formulate the policy. They, form, they should formulate the policy with the interest of the, of the uh, poor farmer in mind, mm -hmm. not with the interest of the rich, uh, let's say the rich people who really want to benefit from agriculture mm -hmm. while leaving behind the poor village farmer. The small scale farmers that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the youths. Yeah. So the, the policy would focus mainly on those practicing it in the villages in a small scale or either large scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why do you think youths opt for white collar jobs? Uh, and not agriculture? Because there is an uh, existing irritation that white collar jobs uh, pay more than you, you can get in agriculture. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an irritation because mm. you can actually get so much in agriculture than uh, probably an office worker would get mm -hmm. in a month or in half an year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which is, in, which is the easiest, easiest crop, let me, let me put it, that way, for lack of a better word, easiest crop that youths can take up mm -hmm. and the maturity takes sh a shorter period and it can actually also attract youths, apart from poultry. Uh. <laughs> apart from poultry farming, mm -hmm. which other form of farming that okay. can use take up, youths take up mm -hmm. and they bring quick results. Because, you know, uh, as youths, we have to to Zaraka, Zaraka, to Malizane, to Patedo, to Yes. 
I think there, there is a variety mm -hmm. uh, the, of crops that are mature faster. Mm -hmm. So you can f harvest in less than three months or three to, between three to four months. Mm -hmm. And actually most of these crops in Kenya mm -hmm. mature within three months, four months. Pota sweet, pot uh, sweet potatoes mm -hmm. takes a long time. Mm -hmm. But potatoes, they take uh, three to four months. Mm -hmm. Though uh, they cannot be cultivated in all areas in the country. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the challenges. That's the challenge, mm -hmm. no? Uh, but I think vegetables, like uh, cabbages, mm -hmm. they take uh, close to five months. Mm -hmm. uh, kales, skumawiki, uh, you can do uh, fruits farming, maybe pass on fruit, though I don't know uh, how long it will take. But I think uh, there, are, there are a variety of these crops which take a short time to mm -hmm. mature. Mm -hmm. and you can research, farmers would now uh, get in the internet mm -hmm. yeah, and find out uh, these crops mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there are other lucrative crops mm -hmm. that I can actually attract their youths mm -hmm. yes that was Eric uh, an agribusiness expert and student from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology thank you so much Eric for making time for us yes and we've been discussing matters agriculture and why are youths not taking up agriculture's form of employment despite agriculture contributing 26% of Kenya's GDP. Well, you remember you can keep on talking to us using our social media platform, Y254 channel across social media platform. Well, that's all we had here on Y254 Business News. My name is Miriam Masava. Good night. God bless you.